Hey everyone, my name is Mitch and this is Squatch Proof. On this channel, we are all about the great outdoors from outdoor adventures, locations, and outdoor gear and tech reviews. We may even do some outdoor landscaping ideas, living spaces, and we might even do some barbecuing, we don't know. This is an adventure in itself, and we're kind of just going to see where it goes. So last summer, 2021, myself, the wife Jamie, and our friend Rob, we went on a bucket list adventure, as they say, and we left from our house just east of Portland and went down to Arizona. We went boat camping on the Colorado River in Glen Canyon through the Horseshoe Bend. We went kayaking into Antelope Canyon and hiked the Slot Canyons. We did some touring through Bryce Canyon and Shoshone Falls in Idaho as well. So don't mind the wind chimes. I'm out on my back deck and we now have a new frog in the waterfall slash pond. And uh, he's pretty noisy. Jamie thought he was a bullfrog, but I don't think so. We can't even see him. I do have one disclaimer. I am not a professional videographer or editor, kind of learning as I go. And I know I could have cut it down to more perfect images and footage and all that stuff, but not really going for perfection. I'm just going for our experience and I'm sure I'll get better as we go. Without further ado, let's get to the video. Bill! Bill is gone. He wasn't squatch proof. We got on the road Saturday, July 3rd, nine hour drive to Twin Falls with a few stops to let the dogs out and switch drivers. Our first stop was Stonehenge on the Washington side of the Columbia River. Stonehenge is a full-scale replica of the site in England. It's uh, about 100 miles east of Portland and is the first World War I memorial built in the United States. Jamie, Rob, here's our campsite. We still have to unload everything out of the truck, <clears throat> which should be interesting, but not too bad. And then I'm gonna win at cornhole later. This is you. On our way out of town, we stopped at Shoshone Falls, which is one of the largest natural waterfalls in the United States. At 212 feet tall, it is actually taller than Niagara Falls. Look at that cute hat. <laughs> and yours is cute too, Rob. Leg two of the trip, a 12 hour leg down to Page, Arizona, where my son Mikey, his fiance Trisha, and their friend Joseph had acquired us a campsite at Lee's Ferry Campground. Uh, we encountered some interesting weather and entertained ourselves the best we could. In half a mile. directions. You, uh, you, you know 100%? No, I'm like 20. What are you saying? I'm just saying. Look at that. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> wow. The Grand Canyon National Park. The boss back there thinks my videos are shitty and boring, so. Didn't get her on tape saying it. No. <laughs> anyway. Hearsay, hearsay. Hearsay. I got this great beard oil on. <laughs> Which makes my beard so soft. Kind of looks like a <laughs> Finally, about 45 minutes from Lee's Ferry Campground, we got our first view of the canyons. Uh, and it was pretty impressive. It was really windy, but yeah, it's incredible. We 
finally made it. Here's the whole crew. Uh, what is this? Lee's Ferry Campground. Hi, baby. It was about a 40 minute backhaul up the river. We used the company Kayak de Colorado for two main reasons. One, they had framed ore boats. Three weeks before the trip, Jamie went and broke four ribs, so we wanted to be able to haul more comfort items. And two, they allowed dogs. And Rue actually sat up next to the captain quite a bit and got some love. Uh, Kayak de Colorado was great. We highly recommend them if you're gonna do this trip. There's the put-in point or takeout point, whatever you want to call it. There's Rob, I forgot something already, and we're kind of off. As soon as we got to Arizona, we quickly learned what a cicada was and that they hatch every 13 to 17 years and they had hatched before we got there. So all day we heard this buzzing sound. Real. We did a lot of planning for this trip, but there was not much we could do to plan for the heat. I know it's Arizona in summer, but it was pretty hot and it never really dropped below the mid 90s at night. So not a lot of sleep, just laying there trying to get comfortable. A couple of miles downriver from where we started, there are some hieroglyphs that are really cool, but the ground was so hot that the dogs couldn't walk on it. So we kind of had to split up. And there are lots of these giant rib boats that have tours that go up there. So we didn't spend a lot of time there and didn't get a lot of footage. To add to the 115-ish degree temperatures, the average water temperature of the river is 48 degrees. So you couldn't actually swim in the river. Uh, to cool off, we basically would dunk our hats and then throw them on and go into shock for about 15 seconds. But it worked out and it was still an amazing trip. Breaking camp, first night, Colorado River. Everybody is packing up down there. Uh, it was it was hot. It was hot. When it, it, it finally cooled down, who knows, sometime in the morning, but it's pretty early and it's hot already. So that's it, back to the river.
Okay. It's Tuesday, July 6th. Uh, we're having hotel night. Uh, three days of camping in 100 plus degree heat. No sleep. And now we have uh, hotel, AC, showers, uh, pool, uh, doing laundry. And uh, that's it. Went out to eat. And that's it. So tomorrow we're doing Antelope Canyon. And then we're heading up to Bryce Canyon. We rented kayaks from Lake Powell Paddleboard and Kayak Rental Company, and they were fantastic. Um, we kept changing boats from singles to tandems, tandems to the XL tandems, back to singles, and we finally got it figured out. They kind of just let us do whatever we wanted and really accommodated us. So if we were gonna do it again, we would definitely uh, use them. We started this paddle pretty early uh, in the morning and the conditions were perfect. The lake was calm, as you can see, and uh, it was just really beautiful. However, on the way back to the dock, it was afternoon and all the power boats were out on the lake. There was some wind and it was pretty choppy. It was a little more challenging and we didn't really get any footage of that. I mean, to be totally honest, this thing is a lot easier to manage than the canoe. Yeah. Even with broken ribs. <laughs> this is like, this, is, this isn't bad at all. Plus the water is really calm. Roo. The slot canyons were pretty incredible. They were Jamie's favorite part of the trip. But once again, because of the heat, even though it was morning, the dogs couldn't walk on the sand. So Rob and I stayed back with the boats and played in the water with the dogs while the uh, rest of the group went uh, about an hour out, an hour back. They loved it. Okay, we made it to Kings Creek Campground last night. Lots of spaces. Uh, it was finally a cool evening. We uh, were able to stay up and chit chat around, uh, no fire, but around the picnic table. Now we are 
heading up to Keystone Arches right out of camp. The kids are out up running up Bry Bryce Canyon. We'll be doing that tomorrow. The Adventures of Rob and Milo. <laughs> <laughs> After several days of constantly going and meeting boat rental times and paddling all day, uh, it was nice just to get up, have a breakfast, hang out, and then go for a hike. Uh, it was a very nice hike. The arch and hoodoos and scenery was great. Um, on the way back, we did take a wrong turn and ended up a few hours farther away than we should have been. Uh, ran out of water, ran out of food, and of course it was hot. So part of the way in, we drew straws and Jamie went and got the truck and came back and picked us up. Thankfully, we weren't as far away as we thought we were and she was back in no time. So day six, we are heading into the first viewpoint at Bryce Canyon, which I believe is sunset, sunrise. Jamie, sunrise, sunset. Oh, it's unclear. Ah, it's sun, something, sunset. Bryce Canyon was incredible. There is a 12 mile stretch of highway they call the Million Dollar Highway, and there's just little viewpoints along the way. It's a little touristy, but that's okay is still incredible there are hiking trails but like a lot of the national parks down there they do not allow dogs so we didn't go on them On the drive down to Arizona at the beginning of the week, we passed Best Friends Animal Sanctuary. And as soon as we did, we knew we had to find a way to stop. Jamie loves everything about them, has sweatshirts, t-shirts, socks, bumper stickers, uh, you name it. She loves Best Friends and especially Angel's Rest, which is a giant pet cemetery. Within Angel's Rest, there are over 1800 wind chimes. Uh, pet owners that uh, have lost their pet can pay to have a wind chime put up there. They are all tuned in D, and Jamie's old dog Emmett has a wind chime there, although we couldn't find it. Yeah. 
Angel's Rest at Best Friends Animal Sanctuary. Jamie's love bank is full. <laughs> This is Angel's Rest. So that was our trip. We headed home after Best Friends. We did stop in Provo and Twin Falls, and then we got home that following Sunday. Damn, that wind chime. The tripometer on my truck registered just over 3,000 miles in 51 hours of driving. There was a lot of time in the truck and a lot of driving, but it was well worth it. If you liked the video, even if you didn't like the video, give us a thumbs up. Uh, I'd say subscribe, but this is our first video, so we don't even know what's coming next. Hopefully I'll have something up in the near future. And we want to hear from you. So if you've done this trip and want to share your experience or have comments, please do so in the comments below. Also, if you've done a different trip that's a bucket list type trip or some kind of road trip or an adventure, please share that too. We'd love to hear about it and maybe it'll inspire us to do that as well. So before I go, of course, when you're out in the outdoors, watch for Squatch. And if you see Bill, tell him we've kept looking for him, and we have a chair and a red beer waiting by the campfire for him. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.